What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the podcast. On this episode, I am joined by UFC veteran and featherweight contender uh, Chaz Skelly. We get into his MMA and wrestling career, just kind of what got him into fighting and his uh, progression of his career, where he feels like he is, and uh, what he holds for the future. He's kind of nursing an injury right now, so he's done some things as far as his training camps and uh, moving to Florida. So we get to talk to him about that and see uh, where he sees his career right now and uh, how he got to where he's at. So thank you guys and uh, enjoy the podcast. Podcast. I, I knew you wrestled like when you were younger, correct? Yep. Did that, uh, I mean, that like kind of prompt you into fighting, really? I mean, is that what you. Yeah, you know, I, I wrestled, uh, I wrestled since I was five. I wrestled all through high school, um, all through college, and then I just didn't, I, I didn't feel like I was done competing, you know, and I was done with college. I didn't feel like I accomplished what, what I set out to accomplish. So, uh, I came back from college, got a got a real job for a little bit, and was like, man, I'm I'm still uh, I'm still young, I'm still ready to compete. So I just got kind of got into fighting. Did you uh, did you so you fought started fighting in Texas? Was that originally where you where you got your start? Yeah, yeah, I I, I was in Texas all the way up until uh, really last year. So you've yeah, been in Texas forever. That's cool. So did you fight like on the local circuit out there? I mean, just a couple fights out there. Yeah, I fought out here, basically the local circuit, um, local and what would you say, regional circuit, I guess, uh, I had three Bellator fights, a couple fights for mm-hmm. Legacy, and but they were pretty much all in Texas, as I fought uh, a couple in Louisiana, I think, but for the most part, every every one of my fights, until I was maybe 11 or 12 and 0, were in Texas, 11 and 0, I think. Until you got in the UFC? Yeah. So yeah. like Bellator was just in the area and they would just call you up because you were a local guy? Yeah, once I fought <clears> for them and they were in Louisiana and I think I fought for them twice in Dallas. Right. Did you um, <clears throat> did you have a pretty long amateur career at all? Did you... No, I just, I fought two amateur fights, um, both of which I was pretty out of shape for, <clears throat> pretty, you know, fresh back from college, drinking, yeah. drinking pretty heavily and just uh, <clears throat> decided to fight. <laughs> Was it like, because I think you only had two fights before you got called up to Bellator, is that, like, did you ever have any doubts about maybe, you know, waiting a little bit, or? No, no, I, I, you know, to be honest with you, I just kind of, uh, I had a couple pro fights, and they offered me real good money, I guess there was a local, local guy that, he brought in a ton of people, it was in Louisiana, right, and he had a ton of people coming to watch him, his guy, dropped off like a week out and so they called and said they'd give me pretty good money to fight fight on a week's notice at 155 and i was like let's do this you know i kind of i looked at uh i looked him up you know he was a jiu-jitsu guy and at the time you know i didn't know much about jiu-jitsu but i knew i was a wrestler and i knew i was gonna be able to take him down over and over so you know it kind of is what it is yeah so how long did you did you train um striking or anything like that before you actually started fighting no, not. I mean, I pretty much came back from college and was training uh, with Johnny Bedford and right, a couple other guys. A couple, mm-hmm. uh, actually, Will Capizano, Johnny Bedford, a guy named Douglas Fry. Just trained together and um, did a lot of sparring. I mean, I had a, I had a guy that was trying to show me some. Bo- uh, Raphael Casillas is a, he's a good boxing coach, you know, uh-huh. in the Fort Worth area, and um, he had worked with me some, but you know, I really didn't have much i just kind of was training with those guys and we sparred a lot and we were just beating each other up we were young and you know full of piss and vinegar i guess we were sparring with like even like sparring with like small gloves and yeah just going at it pretty much and uh i enjoyed it you know so i was but i was basically just taking people down and wrestling a lot and jiu-jitsu came uh, very naturally to me uh my jiu-jitsu my level of jiu-jitsu kind of rose pretty quick so i was submitting people a lot and just out wrestling people and and i didn't really use striking much until until you know i started kind of realizing i'm getting uh i'm getting up there in competition i need to start 
How did you your... know? I'd go. I'd brawl. Go I'd brawl with you, but no, nothing technical, really. Right. How did you? How did your jujitsu kind of play in your wrestling? You know, th- did you find certain things that were obviously you're gonna have great hips and good pressure takedowns? Did you find anything as far as that wrestling was not advantageous to your jujitsu? Um, no, not really, because. My style of wrestling is so different than most people's style of wrestling. I'm real funky. I've always been a real funky wrestler, real unorth- unorthodox. Uh, I've always done a lot of rolls and grambies. Um, a real, def- you know, I would say defensive style wrestling as far as takedowns. People, I let people get in real deep, and then I kind of lock around the crotch and start start working my game. So, uh, you know, I've never been a sprawler. I've always been. I like it. The the deeper you are in on me, the better the better off I feel like yeah. I am. So. Uh, no, I've always felt like that my wrestling game really complimented jiu-jitsu like, a lot just because of my style. It's just funky, just kind of rolling. A lot of rolling, a lot of just going with the flow, floating even on top. So, Yeah, well, it's funny that you know you talk about jiu-jitsu, but I think a lot of your – would you have the fastest uh, – was the fastest Dars? Yeah, fastest submission That's, at Featherweight. That was freaking – at Feather was not – it's like what, 14 seconds or something? I think it was seventeen, but okay. you know he was actually he was like out in fourteen probably. It was it was pretty quick. He was out pretty fast. You is know? that is that something? I mean, with your like, I mean, you're pretty tall, kind of pretty thin, like uh, long arms and stuff. <clears throat> I'd say is that like something you go for a little dar like dar choke anacondas that type of thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm a I love those front, all front headlock chokes and you know I'm a I'm one of those guys like I I kind of just like I said I kind of just mm-hmm. go with the flow and and. Probably my best position is on someone's back. You know, I'm, I'm like a, a backpack. You know, nice. I've always been a leg rider my whole life, so that's always been where I was good wrestling. You know, once once I got on someone's back, you know, my leg riding's always been real solid, and and so I would say I'm best from the back. But yeah, the front headlock chokes, I'm really dangerous from there too. So Mars Dars, Anaconda, you know, all that. I, I love all that stuff. You know, guillotines, everything. Do you do you train primarily no gi, um, or do you do you like to put gi in as well? Yeah, yeah, I, I train pretty much all no gi, and uh, I am gonna start rolling a little more with the gi. You know, I was a blue belt like seven years ago. Wow. And I'm still a blue belt now because I I've only put the gi on probably you know thirty times total. So I uh, but I really want to start doing it more now that I'm I'm out there training with like Gilbert Burns and uh, actually Herbert Burns and and there are some really good uh, guys out there that I train with in Florida now. And I want to start rolling with those guys with the gi on and just see if I can elevate my level. Gi game, it's just something different, you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of fun. Kind of break up the Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fun. Yeah, there's so much different stuff you can do. I mean, so I, I prefer probably the gi. Uh, I'd say I probably prefer it because I'm better at, at gi than no gi. I feel like I am. I never wrestled or anything like that. So I don't know. I just like the grips and I like the, <laughs> the chokes and stuff for me. Uh, I enjoy it, but <clears throat> so are, are you splitting time now? Like, are you you traveling to Florida and are you living there, or what are you up to? No, I'm not really splitting time. I'm actually I'm living in Florida now, but I'm in Texas. Uh, in my last fight, I got hurt, um, so I went to a doctor here, and I'm kind of just waiting around for my. Uh, actually, I'll be leaving after Tuesday. I've got another doctor's appointment on Tuesday, and then I'll be heading back to Florida, but. My lease is up on my place at the end of this month, so I got to get there in a hurry. And I'm looking to buy a buy a house in Florida. I just nice. gotta gotta find one first, I guess. Yeah, where are you training out there now? We're in Florida. Combat Club. It's with uh, Henry Hoop and uh, Greg Jones. So he was was he just at uh, Black Zillions, I guess, and he moved. Yeah. Okay. Um, gotcha. Yeah, it was there were Black Zillions, and then Black Zillions split up, and and. Uh, and Henry Hoof and Greg Jones kind of went one way, and then the other guys went another way. So, yeah, I mean, basically, just a little split between that team, I guess. Uh-huh. So, do you find like there's just better training for you out there than anything you could find in Texas? Um, yeah, I think, I think uh, the level of competition out there with my training partners is a lot higher. Um, I have great training partners out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I I really enjoy going with the guys out there like i said gilbert michael johnson um mm-hmm. i mean I could, I could go on and on about the training partners out there there's just a ton of guys i don't want to sit here and name everybody but it's really 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 competitive guys everybody from the guys that are still amateurs to the guys that are fighting the ufc are, mm-hmm. are all really tough um the striking coaching is exactly what i need with henry henry's just awesome you know he's a very technical kickboxing 
uh, coach, and that's what I need. Um, Greg Jones, a three-time Division One national champion wrestler, and then of course, you know, I get to roll with guys like Gilbert and Herbert Burns, and so you know, it's it's kind of a win-win. You know, it's it's hard to there, there's no place where that team's really weak, and then not to mention they have a strength conditioning coach, uh, Dr. Peacock, up there. So it's it's a good good deal. So where do you like? Where do you feel like you need to get your striking? Where reasonably, where do you where do you think it can get to? I mean, in a short amount of time. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think I can be one of the best strikers in the world. I uh, I don't see any reason why I can't. You know, this last fight, you know, I would have liked to have shown my striking a little more. I just, you know, I got uh, got myself. Uh, no excuses. No excuses. Uh, Jason and I did a great job. He he, uh, you know, won the fight. He he's a great great fighter, great competitor. You know, I kind of got hurt early in the first, and and I, you know, I just couldn't throw my right my right hand at him, and that's kind of uh kind of a big weapon for me. So, uh, I think that I can I can be one of the best strikers in the world at my weight class. You know, I'm I'm tough. I'm a durable guy, and and you know, Henry's got me working on a lot of things. You know, obviously it's not something that's going to change overnight, but but with the amount of work that I put in, I, I do think that I can be one of the best best in the world. Um, what about, you know, you said you were uh, injured. What kind of injury did you sustained after uh-huh. this last fight? Do what? What kind of injury did you sustain after your last fight? Uh, I, I had, uh, I fractured my arm. I actually, my arm popped out and, uh, fractured in the, um, uh, radial head. Okay. Yeah. Just, on my yeah, right arm. And I, yeah. and I tore the both ligaments top and bottom that run to my elbow i completely tore them both off the bone really so they have, yeah. then i'm doing surgery with you well they wanted to do surgery but it was too it was too swollen too inflamed Holy shit. and so and i couldn't straighten it far enough they were afraid i would i would uh lose a lot of range of motion so mm-hmm. i've been doing rehab and i go in on tuesday to see i can straighten it now yeah and so i go in on tuesday to see um see where i'm at so you haven't really thrown anything, thrown punches, not really done much of anything. Oh, no, I can't do hardly anything. Well, I mean, you know, I do normal stuff. I'm, it's not in like a cast or anything. Right, I'm right. Moving it and stuff, but I, you know, it's very has no uh, strength or anything right now. So yeah, I had no. a, a similar, somewhat of a similar injury. I, I bet it. I have actually planted when I was doing jujitsu. I planted my arm down. This guy was pulling on me, and uh, I fractured like the radius, but not the radial head. So I was, I was freaking lucky as hell, man, because. I still had trouble. It took me like six months. I didn't even go to the doctor, which is probably not smart to say because I'm a physical therapist. And I knew I had, I had like I had him uh, do some X-rays, and I sent him down to the doctor. Like you'd be all right. And I mean, it took me like six months. So, but I know, man, that that is insanely. Uh, I mean, you, so the radial head that that kind of healed back up. I mean, or is that still something you're dealing with? I I actually think uh, you know when they looked at it, they said it was. You know, it was a small fracture, so I, right. you know, I feel like that's pretty, pretty healed up. I think the, the main thing here is the just the torn ligaments on just the, the ligaments, the... and they they said it was completely ruptured. The both of them were, yeah, yeah. So like, is your <laughs> is your elbow been dislocating on you at all? Uh, no, not really. It's been well. I mean, it's been real loose. It's been real really? weak. I, I have been very, uh, careful with it though. You know, I, I haven't really done t- too much to. To let it dislocate, you know, I've been, but it does feel, it feels like it slips out, you know, it's kind of weird, kind of a thing. So what have you, like, what have you been doing, like, since you've been injured? Is there anything you've kind of done to keep yourself busy or just been eating a lot? Yeah, just getting as fat as I can. Awesome. What's your weight? Oh, I don't know. I'm probably about 72, 73. You you fight at 45? Yeah, 45. Oh my God. What what do you but, usually uh, what do you usually cut? I mean, if you're just getting ready for a training camp or something, what are you cutting? Well, uh, you know, I used to get up to about seventy five, and I've actually gotten up to eighty five before, but I try to keep it under seventy now. <laughs> and I actually have a nutritionist that he's really good, and we've actually gotten to where the weight cuts are very easy for me. Yeah. Actually, I barely even do an actual weight cut. I I pretty much died all the way down, and I'm dieting all the way up until the the day of weigh-ins. You know, like uh, this last weight cut, I ate all three meals on Thursday before weigh-ins. I drank two gallons of water on Thursday before weigh-ins, and on Friday I 
I cut for about an hour, hour and a half, and then I was, uh, or maybe just an hour, and then I was on weight. So, do you like the like the weather change in the weight cutting and and all that? Like as far as doing the earlier, um, I mean the earlier weigh-ins, I guess, kind of unofficial weigh-ins. Oh yeah, yeah yeah, I love it. It gives you more time to recover, I guess. Or I mean, I mean, what's the point of waiting around until two or four in the afternoon? You're right. just you're and you're miserable. It's not. I mean, there's no, there's nothing productive about waiting around until two or four in the afternoons. It's actually dangerous, you know, if you right. think about it. Some of these guys, you know, some of these guys are cutting so much weight, and I used to, I used to be like that. I used to dehydrate myself so extreme that I was pulling fluid from places that fluid doesn't need to be pulled from. And if you don't have, I mean, every every hour counts when you're rehydrating. Yeah. Uh, when you've been pulling fluid like that, um, every minute, every hour counts. So, I think it's a good thing. So you're not really like, what were you doing to cut like those massive amounts of weight before? Were you just like just dehydrating really bad in the sauna? I was hot tubbing, yeah, but I mean, I was basically like, I would start two weeks out and I would I would do my workouts and I, I mean, I was still drinking two gallons of water a day, right? But I was basically starting two weeks out and and starting to cut cut my diet down extreme like an extreme diet cut, and then I would be hot tubbing for an hour at the end of every day, even after workout. So I would work uh-huh. out and I would hot tub for an hour that night and I would go and I would work out on a hot tub or sauna for an hour that night. And so my weight was coming down like a pound a day. Uh-huh. But then the week of the weight cut, I would do an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon, hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. And then the day of the day before weigh-ins, I would just do it until I made weight. And it's really, it was pretty miserable. I mean, I mean, what do you feel like the trade-off is as far as like you know fighting a fifty-five versus uh, forty-five? You know, if you didn't have to cut as much, I mean, is there? Do you feel like the guys are that much bigger at that uh, you know at that weight or? No, I feel like uh, well, I don't do it like that anymore. I feel like fighting at forty-five is a uh, is where I need to be. It's um, I'm not I'm not doing it like that anymore. Like I said, I do it very smart mm-hmm. now, and I diet all the way mm-hmm. down. Like I came in it. Like I literally came in the week of weigh-ins just from my diet at 154 this this weight cut. Okay. So you know on Tuesday when I got there I was 154, right? And I continued my workouts and I didn't do any weight cutting, no sauning, no hot tubbing until the day of weigh-ins. Uh, I got I got to the whatever LA Fitness at um, 7 a.m. and I mm. I got hot tub for an hour and then I went and went and weighed in. You know so. For me, 145 is where I need to be, and um, it's uh, it keeps me disciplined. It keeps me disciplined on my diet. It keeps mm. me disciplined on my on my uh, routine. You know, it just makes sure that I'm in a steady, solid routine, and I like that. You know, I think uh, I think a lot of these guys, if you can make that weight, if your body can physically get down that weight, like you could do it probably a lot better. You probably don't have to cut as much water as some of these guys are cutting. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I think that some of these guys just aren't as disciplined on their diet as they probably should. Be. Yeah. But then again, you know, maybe they can't. Maybe maybe they're, the only way to make it is to cut all that water. But, I mean, for me, I, I found um, it's, a, it's so much easier now. And all I got to do is just stay disciplined. And, you know, it's easier said than done. But right. uh, I'm so much happier now. I mean, my, my workouts are better. I'm happier. My cardio is way better during the fight. Uh, I feel great. What do you like to do for like as far as like you know uh, strength conditioning cardio and all that stuff? Um, I like to you know I, I bike a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got I got hooked up with a guy Stradali Stradali bicycles. They he kind of he hooked me up with a with a badass mountain bike and I like to do that a lot. And this, right now since as soon as I get back to Florida I'm gonna start training mm-hmm. since I'm gonna be out for a little while. Um, uh, you know until I get this arm strengthened up I'm gonna. I'm going to start training for a triathlon, you know, uh, so I'll be running, biking and hopefully swimming. I mean, I don't know with swimming. I don't know how my, I'm really going to talk to the dog about that, but right. a lot of biking, a lot of biking. You know, I, I don't really like to run that much anymore. It's, it's tough on the, tough on the old ankles and feet and knees and lower back. So are you like in your thirties? Yeah, 30? I'm 32. I'm 32. So you're, yeah, you're an old, old that. Yeah. Dude, I, I understand. I, honestly, I don't feel I'm 34, man, or almost 34, and I'm not. You know, I don't feel as good as I was in my 20s, or I can't recover as well. I guess. 
Yeah, you know, it's hard. It is hard to recover, but I do everything. I take care of my body a lot better now, though. I mean, outside of – I'm not right now. You know, after the fight, I've been kind of – I mean, I've been running and, and stuff, but just uh, as far as – as far as uh, pre-workout, you know, mm. the stretching and the rolling out and the – and uh, getting warm, you know, I, I go through all the, I, I touch all the bases now, you know, I do all the warm up and recovery things that I have to do, and, which if I knew about those when I was younger, you know, I, I would be a lot better off probably. What, what do you, um, what would you say kind of got you into wrestling to begin with, man? Like, so what, is there's nothing, I mean, I know, is that like a pretty big thing in Texas besides football? Uh, I started in Pennsylvania. I guess. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, I was in Pennsylvania until like middle school, so. All right. My whole family wrestle my dad my uncle my dad and my uncle were the coach to the to the uh little league wrestling team there and my brothers and cousins both wrestled and uh just kind of a family thing so yeah so, i mean yeah. that's it we said uh the name of our wrestling team when i was a kid were the skelly scrappers do you feel like i mean as a little kid doing wrestling i mean that even or you just because you do it at such a young age you feel like you're pretty immune to i mean even nerves or Oh, I mean, you know, I'm competitive, and I've always been a competitive person. So, actually, I would get really nervous wrestling when I was a kid. You know, not I wouldn't say freaked out, but just uh, nervous. I just didn't want to lose. You know, I never want to lose. I've never. Um, so yeah, I mean, nerves used to bother. You know, I used to get really nervous when I was a kid. Uh, but not 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 so much anymore. You know, with fighting, I actually get way less nervous to fight than I ever have wrestling. So. Yeah. Way less. Yeah, I'll tell you, my first tournament, I, and everybody probably gets tired, whoever listens to my podcast, I, I, told, I, was, like, I was like 25, 26, when I started. I didn't do any wrestling or anything like that. I freaking threw up in my I had like a protein bar, and then like after my first match, I threw up in my mouthpiece. It was fucking, so I like, I would pick it out of my mouth, and my dad was there, and I like went and rinsed it out for me, it was miserable. Like, I was so freaking nervous, like I think I probably went to the, I don't even know how many times I, I, I went to the bathroom and took a shit. I mean, it was crazy. Like, I was like, what the hell am I doing? Like, why am I, you know, like I played soccer growing up, you know, so I was like, what the, what the hell am I doing, <laughs> you know, freaking out here? But uh, I don't know. Is it, was there, uh, you know, I was going to ask you with the wrestling being a normal progression, like, was there like anything you were just, like as far as fighting that intrigued you? I mean, you just, could you, do you feel like you just take a punch or, or you, you know, you just been in some fights and you just wanted to do it? Um, uh, I don't know. I was kind of, uh, I guess I was, a little bit of a rowdy kid growing up like when i was you know i grew up in a i've always grown up in small small towns a couple so small town in pennsylvania small town in texas i guess there's a couple things to do you know party and fight so pretty much it <laughs> so uh you know i just kind of kind of grew up that way i think uh, i've always been i've always been uh kind of a jokester but laid back you know kind of always trying to make jokes and be, be the funny guy but uh um when it came time to fight i was always i was always down i've always enjoyed it i've always liked fighting um and so i kind of just did that you know in high school and college you know wrestlers tend to be a rowdy bunch so you know we'd go to parties and end up getting into a scrap and you know that was that so yeah i always I, you know i kind of enjoyed fighting but no you know i think uh i think it was more as opposed to it being like, because I loved to fight, just as opposed to it being like, oh my god, I, I want to fight people. Mm. It was always just, just more, more. I wanted to compete. You know, right. I just didn't feel like I was done competing as a wrestler. And so, so, so for you, it's more, just the more but, just the competition aspect of it. Wouldn't it just kind of yeah. natural progression from wrestling? Yeah, for sure. You know, I just uh, I, I more enjoy the competition aspect than the actual fighting. So what do you think, like, if you have to, look, like, right now we're kind of looking at yourself where your career is at right now. What do you think? Do you think you're where you want to be? Do you feel like there's things you could have done differently or, or, or better or worse even? I mean, I mean, there's always things that you could do better. And I guess there's always things that you could have done worse. I mean, so where I am where I am, you know, and and the only thing I can do about it, I can't, I can't think about what I could have done better. And I can't mm -hmm. think about how I could be in a better spot. All I can do is just uh, be better. Right. Train harder and uh, prepare for the next fight in front of me and, and make a run for the title. I mean, that's ultimately the goal. So it's the goal for everybody. If that's not your goal, then you're in the wrong spot. You're in the wrong sport. So uh, the only thing I can do is is I can control what I can control and, and go work hard and work hard every day. So 
that's right. the plan when I get back. You know, I'm going back to Florida this week, and it's just putting my nose to the grindstone and, and getting after it. Is it, do you have any, you know, after you get injured, do you kind of have, is there any doubts or, you know, as far as getting back to where you were, do, does that ever concern you as something, you know? There's no doubts. I don't think, um, I think uh, you just got to kind of work around your injuries while you, while you have them. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had a lot of injuries in my career. So a lot of small injuries that I've had to work around during camps. I feel like I've never really gotten the opportunity to go into a fight fully healthy. So it's nothing new for me. I just mm -hmm. got to work around it, work hard, and, and continue to improve. I mean, that's, that's just what I got to do. Are you changing kind of your, like, training patterns? Are you changing, you know, your frequency of, of you know, um, of strength conditioning? Or, like, what are you trying to do now since you've gotten older? Like, what, what do you feel like? What kind of tweaks are you making? Uh, You know, I get my prostate checked regularly. That's awesome. I, I, you might be a little uh, – I, you know, I'm going to tell you a secret real quick. Uh, not by a doctor. Well, okay. Well, then, it, even if it was a doctor, he's probably uh, it's probably not legit because you might be a little too young. Yeah, but, I, you know. Uh, wait. You know, I went to uh, I went to a doctor to do my physical when when I first moved out to Florida for my first fight at the uh, at that camp out there. Uh -huh. I went to a doctor to do a physical, and he he was an old old man, old Jewish doctor, and he I go out there and I've got the UFC paperwork, you know you know, for the physical and, and I'm going, I'm doing, doing whatever. And he's like, all right, drop your, drop your pants. And I was like, wait, drop my pants. What? That's not part of the, that's never been part of this physical. He's like, Oh, I got to do my, you know, it's your first time here. So I got to do my own physical. I'm like, Whoa, wait, wait, what? Is this, this isn't part of the deal. So of course I dropped my pants and, uh, let him fondle me for a little bit. I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't know what the deal was with that, but I can't say that I hated it. You know? Really? He, <laughs> no. I mean, that's fine. That's your thing, man. I, I mean, you know. it's, it's whatever. It's I, I, mean, I don't care. I, yeah. I'll, I just let him do what he wanted. Just, 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 just did, it. just did, had his way with you, huh? Yeah. I mean, I didn't make eye contact, so. It's oh, so it's not, it's not, it's not legit. Then, if you don't, uh, if you don't lock eyes, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so you're not doing. You're just getting your prostate check now. Is mainly, mainly all you're doing with. <laughs> With yeah. your, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't that's how you're staying. If that's all you're doing to stay healthy, man, you, you I don't think you're doing it right. Personally, what? you should. I've heard prostate health is, is uh, it's a very, very important. Healthy. It is, but uh, I don't know how. Uh, it's not going to be a, unless you can punch in the asshole. <laughs> if somebody if punches you in the asshole, I guess that may be the only way. That, that may I don't know. Is is that the kind of wrestling you're talking about? Because better be safe than sorry. I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wrestled in high school. I loved it. Did you did you see? There's like a video or something like. A, I guess somebody had got oil checked in the video. Did you, there's a video circulating. Uh no, I've never. I haven't seen that video. I don't suppose, but I, I maybe yeah, I, I don't know if it was a picture or video or something. But I was like, is that? I was just wondering, is that actually something people? I mean, seriously. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I don't. I don't know. Uh, Have you ever done that before? Oh, absolutely. You have really had, while while wrestling? Yeah, I mean it is what it is. Sometimes you gotta get in there. I mean Sometimes is you it, just gotta get knuckle deep, you know? I mean <laughs> I didn't expect <laughs> you know, I didn't think it was gonna go this way, but I'm alright with it. Let's just go where the fuck it goes, you know. I mean it, that's fine. So prostates, um what kind of injuries have you had? Um in the I think you had like a longer break of injuries, um, when you were a little younger. Yeah, I had a uh I broke my one of my feet and tore a lot of the tendons or whatever in my foot. I, I don't know. I had a, just a major foot injury um, when I was younger. It put me out for a year and a half, almost two years. When you were fighting? Yeah. Did so they check tough. your prostate to make sure your foot was okay? Oh, no, no, no. I wasn't concerned about prostate health back then. Oh, okay. So but they, no, that but that's – that, Okay. That wasn't brought to my attention until, until recently. Well, you weren't getting a thorough exam. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, I mean I'm just trying to – I'm just trying to stay healthy now. You know, right, I don't care about right. my health back then. Right. So, so did you? How did you injure your foot? Um, um, I got caught in a, I got caught in a toe hold actually uh, during one of my Bellator fights and uh -huh. it broke and uh, tore the, just you, tore it all up. You won the fight though, huh? Yeah, I won the fight. So you how like did you know you were in trouble when he when he had you? Did you feel like you're 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 just like not yeah. gonna tap? You're just like fucking, I'm not tapping. Yeah, I knew I knew it was uh, bad news. It uh, when it happened, it uh, 
when it broke and I guess the I don't know if the it was like the ligaments tearing in there or what, but I was just like this I could feel it kind of limp uh-huh. and this crazy like warm sensation just rush up through my leg. That's called blood crazy. I think. Yeah, it was painful and <laughs> and uh kinda of crazy at the same time and luckily he kinda of let it go right after that. He knew it was broke too and Really? I he just kinda of let it, I guess he didn't want to gas his arms out just trying to crank it and crank it and crank it but how how long into the fight was that? Uh, maybe it was the middle of the second round, or so. Do you fucking you knew it was broken though, right? You were like, oh, yeah, you, you knew. Oh, yeah. So I you're I, you just kept going. I mean, you just didn't feel it, adrenaline. I mean, what what was it? What was going uh, through your head? Well, I ended up subbing him pretty quick after that. Okay. So I kind of hit him in the same when he let it go. I rolled for uh, we came up into a scramble. I rolled for a knee bar and got it. Okay. Uh, so, but, but I mean, it doesn't, you know, I kind of feel like I'm just competitive, you know, I just, right. uh, well, I most, that competitive nature most of your wins are like submissions, aren't they? Huh? Most of your wins are submissions, correct? Yeah. Yep. So does that mean, like, I, I don't know, do you feel like you just got knack, like a knack for it or, or me? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I've, uh, just like fucking been, choking people, you just choke people. Break shit. Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I feel like I've got a crazy squeeze, and once I, once I get a hold of you, I, I I'm, I'm the type of person I, uh, I'm a submission hunter. I, I just go, I go for submissions. I go for submissions. Some guys, some guys are more apt to look for like ground and pound type stuff on top. Uh-huh. Which I like to hit people. I like to elbow people and and cut people open and stuff on top. But I'm always looking for submissions. I'm always looking to to finish, and I do that even grappling, you know, in the gym and. I'm just a I'm a submission hunter, so I think it just uh, if you uh, I'm on top, and once I I mean if you go for a hundred of them, you're gonna land one of them eventually. Right. Uh, let me let me ask you back about your injury. What was what was your recovery like from that? I mean, was it you know getting back you know all the way to, to fighting again? What what was what did you some of the things you went through? Uh, it was awful. I just uh, because I didn't have insurance or anything, and it was like I was broke and. Uh, you know, I didn't have insurance. I didn't have any way to go to like formal rehab. So, it was so what'd you do? Like rehab. I just kind of rehabbed on my own. I got um, I ended up getting. They casted me up for a long time, and then I kind of started when I when I got that done. I started doing some rehab stuff and doing everything that I could do, and then I started training again, and I hurt it again. So I had to go back to the doctor. You know, he said, you know, it's just kind of, I just kind of waited. It was just kind of a time thing, more mm-hmm. than anything. Did you, re- uh, so you like refractured it? it? Was that what happened? Did you like re-break it or uh, did you know it happened when you were training? Did you feel it? Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, well, I mean, it was never really not hurting. So it was kind of like, gotcha. uh, at first I kind of just thought it was like hurting kind of real bad and then i went back to the doctor and they said you know we're gonna have to cast it back up and you have to stay off of it for six weeks or so so what was the hardest part maybe getting back you know was it would you lose a lot of like just obviously strength but like push off or like your mobility just feel like you, you lost a lot you know kind of explosiveness yeah i think i i think uh with that i, I think with that injury it had a lot to do with uh just getting full yeah strength back in it okay you know for uh explosives and stuff you know i mean it's completely 100 percent now but it took me a long time to get it back to 100 percent. i mean i would say it was never 100 percent until you know maybe last year or so using just time because you just kind of gave it the amount of time you needed to to rest it yeah are you doing like so i know we were talking about a little bit kind of your conditioning and, and everything like that what are you doing now as far as you got a new strength conditioning coach. What are some of the things you've seen that have been beneficial to you? Um, you know, I think sometimes I think that building an aerobic base outside of camp is really important. So that's something I've started to incorporate that I haven't completely incorporated that I that I before I fight again, I will be uh the type of guy who can go out and run you know, 10, 12 miles and, and go bike, bike, you know, 60 miles and swim three miles if I have to, you know, and, uh, I want to have that solid aerobic base gotcha. 
that way when I get in camp, I can get a, I can build the anaerobic base and, and do the explosive exercises. But sometimes what people don't realize is during camp, sometimes less is more, you know, Yeah. uh, when you're doing those hard workouts and you're killing your body for eight weeks, sometimes when your body is telling you that needs a little rest, you don't have to go and do a, a strength conditioning workout that just absolutely murders you and then go back and hit mitts mm. that night or do a sparring session that night or whatever. Sometimes doing those uh, kind of lighter strength conditioning workouts can really benefit you a lot more than killing yourself and then going and killing yourself again, mm. you know? So th- did you ever like feel that maybe you didn't want to take a fight because you were injured or you said you've always been kind of been injured and you're always taking a fight probably not 100%? Um... There was one time that I really didn't want to take a fight that I I came right off of surgery and I was 185 pounds. It was actually when I fought Jim Ehlers okay. in Colorado. Uh, I took the fight on four weeks notice and um, it was the day I stepped back in the gym from thumb surgery basically and I was 185 pounds and they told me, you know, my management was kind of like, you know, you got this fight. Huh. Uh, we got this fight. You need to take it. And so I took it and I, I really didn't want to, but I did. Uh, I ended up winning, but... The weight cut almost killed me. Really? And, um, yeah, I wasn't completely, you know, in shape for the fight because my whole camp revolved around making weight, basically. Right. I and gotcha. really just getting my feet back under me because I had been out from surgery. So what were you doing? So you weren't even, like, really hardly training or, I mean... Yeah, what? I was just doing little things, you know. I was doing what I could, but not really. You know, I was just, I mean... You know, just doing what I could, I guess, but not not really doing much of anything. Probably working out once a day. Yeah. Have you ever had like a really shitty training camp, and then the fight went amazing, or or vice versa, like where you had a really great training camp and you just didn't you were flat in the fight? Uh, yeah, I think I've had a couple. Uh, I think the Tom Niyamaki camp was a rough one for me, and the fight was over in thirty four seconds. So. Yeah, it was uh, a UFC fight, correct? Yeah. So that was a good one. You know, it was a tough camp. Right. That, was, that camp was just horrible for me. And, and the fight ended I, – I finished him in 34 seconds, so it ended up being a great deal. But, um, you know, that's just the way it works sometimes. It's it's not always – you know, they always say that old cliche saying, I guess, it's not – you don't have to be the best. You just got to be the best on that day. Yeah. You don't have to be better than your opponent. You just got to be better than your opponent on that day. And, and sometimes that's just the way it is, you know. Did you when you got called up to the UFC? Um, I think you, you lost by decision uh, in that fight. Maybe was that was that any nerves there? Do you think like just was it something that was that different from Bellator or uh, I guess legacies? I mean, was it really that big of a change? No, nah, I, I you know I don't think I was all that nervous. I just uh, I lost. You know, I had a great great camp for that one. I was in shape. I uh, I caught him real dirty. I mean, I. Got a point taken for an illegal knee, I guess. Right, right. And, you know, I think that should have ended – I think that I should have won my knockout on that one personally. But, no, I, I, I just lost. You know, I don't I – don't, I think uh, I, in my on my – I abandoned wrestling completely and I just wanted to outstrike him really. Uh-huh. And I think that kind of played, played a big part in me losing that fight just uh, due to the fact that I just – all I wanted to do was outbox him and – and just show them that I could out, you know, that I could knock somebody out standing. And so, you know, I not being a complete mixed martial artist in that fight really, really uh, affected me. Do you, do you think you, is there a reason you wanted to stand with them? Is there uh, something you saw in this game, or is there is that you just want to try to be more exciting, or, or what did you think? Yeah, I just want to knock them out. You know, just for the hell I mean, of it, just knock them out. Yeah, I just want to knock them out. All right. Yeah. And I like to stri- – I mean I like to – I love boxing. I love standing and strike. I love boxing. Yeah. I love kickboxing. So um, that's never been an issue with me wanting to strike with people. I haven't always stood up and just – and struck with people because I felt like I was so much better on the ground than a lot of guys yeah. that I fought. I just went ahead and took them down and finished them. Uh, you won performance of the night for your submission um, in the UFC. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I won performance of the night for uh, – for your uh, against like, Maximo Blanco, yeah, it was the quickest choke. It was the quickest, yeah. yeah. So what what the hell was going through your head when you when that happened? Like, did, were you expecting it? Were you? Yeah, at that point, I mean, after I think you know fastest submission, I yeah. ran out, jump kicked him, and then choked him <laughs> unconscious. So I was like, if I don't get performance of the night for this, and I don't know what I'm going to get it for. So and, like, 
what did you do with all that money? Is there anything you do with it? Saved most of it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's pretty hard to do. <laughs> or tried, you know, I mean, lived, saved it sure. as much as I could, you know. Do, do you feel like you you can make a pretty decent living fighting? I mean, is there... Is there yeah, I feel like yeah. I'm making a great living. Yeah. Is there, is, do you think there's anything else you would rather do? I mean, if you had... Uh, I know it's, it's pretty cliche, like you had kids and stuff, would you be okay with them fighting and if that's what they wanted to do? If that's what, you know, if that's what they want to do, then that's yeah. what they want to do. You know, it's not a, a matter of, it's not a matter of, uh, what I want. Right, them right. To do. It's I got they you. Want to do, so. Yeah, I was just curious, you know, because there's been some, some that shit in the news with that, that guy, I think, uh, there was a guy, Tim Haig, I think, who's a... Oh, yeah, he died. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, um, like... Yeah, that's really unfortunate, you know, that's, uh... That's uh, sad to hear. You know, it's I hate to hear that. Do you feel like there's things that could be done as far as the UFC goes, or anything that could be safer? Like, you know, the the rules as far as like the they're still kind of confused about that down opponent rule because it's changed now since. I mean, I think I think mixed martial arts is a little different than boxing because the thing sure. with boxing is you can get knocked down. Get an eight count, get back up, get right. punched in the head fifty more times, get right. knocked down, get eight count, get back up, get more times. You know, you're taking a, an accumulative amount of damage. Right. Uh, a lot of you know mixed martial arts. If you get dropped real bad like that, you don't have an eight count. You know, you got somebody jumping on you trying to finish it. And right. The refs there to to kind of stop it. I'm not saying that brain damage can't happen or isn't going to happen or doesn't happen. I'm just saying that you don't have as many accumulative shots hitting you in the head right and therefore I, I don't think it's as damaging as boxing but i mean i don't know you know i i think that i think that they're being proactive about research so that's right. the number one step that's the that's the most important step you know you have to it's a young sport it's still a young sport you don't know you just don't know uh what's going on in someone's brain and someone's head until until you can get that uh, scientific research to right. tell you, so we'll know within the next tw you know twenty years. It'll be too late for me. I'll already be brain dead, but we'll know. <laughs> so not like, did you have ever any problems like you know taking fights close together because you had any kind of head issues going on? I mean, was there ever a concern uh, for you? Or? Yeah, you know, I had a, I did have a, I kind of caught a concussion during a, a camp and and then went ahead and fought anyways, and and that was a, you know, a bad decision on my part, but. You know, it didn't. I mean, I've never had any issues because of it, but I just, uh, you know, I just couldn't um, train during the camp the way I wanted to for the fight. So I didn't really have a good training camp, or didn't have a good training camp at all. You know, the, it didn't affect me during the fight. I just didn't have a good training camp because of it. There were some parts in your career where you kind of took fights close together. I think like one time you took two week fighting yeah, two, two weeks, fight, thirteen days. Yeah. 13 what what days. was? I mean. Two paychecks with one training camp sounds like a good plan. So you just me. you weren't really hurt after the first. I mean, you felt pretty good, pretty healthy. Yeah, so I finished the guy in 34 seconds, and then uh, there was an, a guy that dropped out of a fight. And they called me and asked if I wanted that. And I said, "Well, yeah, definitely." First, I was drunk when they called me, so I didn't. Really you were about drunk, it. so yeah. Yeah. Did you wake up the next day like, "Oh shit, I probably shouldn't have done that"? Or no, I uh, I woke up the next day and drank a Bloody Mary to. To sober get up, myself, to get myself you. going. Oh my god, it, it, that that's that sounds fun. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I don't know. That shit takes me out of commission for a while now. I can't even. I swear, I'm stumbling around for like two days after I yeah. drink some. Um, so I was gonna ask you, man, is there is there uh, do you have a fight coming up that you, that you're looking forward to, or when do you feel like you want to be back? Um, as soon as I, you know, as soon as I step back in the gym to start training, I'll. I don't know, you know, with my arm. I, I just don't know. I, I don't have a, a timeline yet. I know that uh, I'll know on Tuesday. Yeah. So, But as of right now, I just don't have a timeline. And as soon as I step back in the gym, I'll call Sean Shelby and tell him, ask him to get me something. Hey, we, you know, I just would want two months, you know, to get to prepare. But I, uh, I want to fight as often as possible. So if I win, you know, my next fight and don't take any damage and somebody drops out of a fight, I'll – in a couple of weeks, I'll take it. I want to fight as much as possible. I'm, I'm trying to get paid. You know. I heard. Is there? What did you think of? Uh, you keep a pretty close eye on the division, even if you're not fighting. Yeah. 
what did you think of Max Holloway and the Jose Aldo fight? Yeah, I mean, it was a good fight. You know, I uh, I like Max. He's a, he's a solid dude. And uh, Jose Aldo's uh, just somebody that I've watched for a long time and kind of somebody has been an icon in the sport, you know, yeah. at, at my weight class. So it's tough to see him go down like that. But, uh, you know, I feel – have, I feel good for Max. You know, I think he works super hard, and and he's gone through the division, and he's, you know, he's done a great job. So, you know, it was, you know, it was a good fight. Is there like, do you think it's going to matter who you take um, when you come back? Would you want like a a fight where maybe, I mean, not really a warm up fight, but just you know, just a fight that's maybe a little bit more conducive to your style or? No, I, I don't care. Uh, I think if you want to be the best, you have to fight the best. You have to be able to beat anybody. And I do want to be the best. I feel like I feel like I have all the tools to be the best. I just got to put them together and and uh, show up on that day. And and so I really don't care who who they match me up with. Do you feel like um, as far as like the, the shit talking and stuff? Do you, do you think that may be something that would help you or help your notoriety? I mean, because you have a pretty pretty good record, you know, seventeen and three and. A lot of good submissions, a lot of good victories. I mean, do you think that would help you as far as making money? It most likely would because I'm I'm actually a really good talker. I'm a really good shit talker. I, I'm pretty witty, pretty quick off the top of my head. I just don't like to do it, you know, because I feel like we're bo- we're going out there and we are uh, we're we're just trying to make a living. We're both just dude guys trying to make a living, and there's no reason to make it personal. You know, I don't want to make it, I don't have to hate somebody to fight them. Right. So I don't really care to make it personal, but. You know, if it ever if it comes about, you know, somebody like wants to talk some shit, I'll do it. But other than that, I'm not really gonna I'm not gonna say something disrespectful to somebody just because. Just makes more money. Yeah. A lot of guys like you know, obviously Mighty Mouse and, and those kind of guys that are like I think is probably the best by far, you know, the most complete fighter in the UFC. But you know, he doesn't make nearly as much. But I mean, do you think it's maybe due to the weight classes as well? You know, the obviously the heavier weight classes get a little more attention. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it could have something to do, you know, weight class too. You know, smaller guys don't generally get as much attention, uh, don't generally make as much money, I right. guess. But unless you're uh, Connor, I guess, because yeah. he's well, 145, 155, I guess. So, is there? So you don't see anybody that maybe that that would be a good matchup for you as far as coming coming back, or just it really doesn't matter. I don't care. It really doesn't matter. Is, is there anybody that you kind of um, that you've one to emulator kind of whose career you, you, you like watching, you know, that maybe, uh, I've always been a huge, uh, Dan Henderson fan. So yeah, yeah I've always been a big Dan Henderson fan. So I, I've always enjoyed watching him and, you know, I wouldn't mind having the accomplishments that he's had for sure. <laughs> get, get you the H bomb going on, man. Yeah. Um, so just kind of leave you to it, man. Um, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, if there's anything, uh, you know, Obviously, I'm a PT. If there's anything you need, you got questions for me you know, with your injury, man. I'd love to help you out as well. Um, I'm out here in Louisville, Kentucky. If you ever find your way out here, we train out at Derby City uh, Martial Arts. Awesome, so. yeah. If I'm ever in the area, I'll, I'll Awesome, dude. Up. Well, I thank you. I appreciate your time, brother. Yeah, thanks, man. All right. Thanks to Chaz for uh, hanging out for the podcast, and thank you guys for uh, listening. Make sure to check out the new website, uh, jujitsutherapist.com. It's got a free ebook out. And the ebook is on shoulder health, and uh, that's for BJJ specific things. So it's really great for uh, if you're dealing with shoulder injuries or shoulder tightness or shoulder weakness. It's a great way to strengthen. If you guys have any questions for me, my number's written on there. Send me a message on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I'd love to answer it uh, on one of my videos. I appreciate the time, guys. Thank you all again. Thank you to Chaz. We'll see you next time for another podcast.